In this video, we'll discuss panel data. Our goal will again be causal inference. That is, we're looking at an outcome variable y and a regressor x1. And we want to identify the causal effect of the regressor on the outcome. In addition to x1, there may be also other inputs such as x2, x3, and so on. Let's assume that we can represent the relationship between outcome y and all the inputs on the right hand side by a linear form so that we can write like so. Let's also assume that we only have data on y and x1 so that we can never observe this part of the model. We are already familiar with the problem that not all inputs are observed. And what we've done in the past is that we've decided this part here is not observed. So we just declare this the error term, the error term orange u. Let's call the model with the orange error term the orange model. If we want to do causal inference using the orange model, then the orange model has to satisfy a exogeneity assumption. And in particular, the condition expectation of orange u, given the regressor x1, has to be 0. Let's assume that this is not satisfied. This means that we cannot use an order s regression of y on x1 to estimate the causal effect beta 1. Now let's define the error term differently. Let's just declare this part of the model our error term. And we call this the blue error term. Clearly, we cannot estimate the model with the blue error term by all s because we do not observe x2. But for now, let's just dream. And let's suppose we did have data on x2 and then would cause an inference using the model with the blue error term actually work? Let's call the model with the blue error term the blue model. And to interpret an all s regression based on the blue model causally, we have to have an extraneity assumption be satisfied. In particular, the conditional expectation of blue u given x1 and x2 has to be 0. Let's suppose that this is actually satisfied. We are going to proceed with the blue model, but we will have to deal with the fact that x2 is not actually observed. So far, now let's collect this unobserved part in a random variable a. And I want to point out that in this example, there's only one input x2 feeding into this a, but it could be several inputs in the same way as there can be several inputs feeding into the error term u. The model we are going to consider is as follows. So far, this model here is basically just the orange model where we've taken the error term u and split it up into two components. To proceed further, let's consider a concrete economic example. And this example is adapted from the Stock and Watson textbook. 
in this example, our units of observation are US states. And our outcome variable FR are the number of fatal road accidents per 10,000 population in a given year. And our variable of interest is called tax. And tax will be a tax on alcohol consumption. It will be a tax on a casket of beer. Then we have our A and our blue arrow term. This A could, for example, include a state-specific preference for law enforcement. And clearly, if you have very strong law enforcement, you can maybe bring down the number of road fatalities so you can see to that everyone obeys the speed limit and so on. But also, if people like laws, they may be more likely to vote for representatives who implement a uh, beer tax. So there may be a correlation between these two quantities, and this is why it may be problematic to just put the u in a generic uh, error term like we did in this orange model. And that may be a reason why this extraneity assumption here is not satisfied. Now, unfortunately, we are stuck here with a model that we cannot estimate because we don't observe the A and we don't want to put the A into the error term. Let's assume that we observe realizations from this model for every US state in the year 1988. Now, what I've just described is a typical cross-sectional setting where we observe a model for lots of units at one particular moment in time. But now let's assume that we observe this model not only in 1988, but also in 1982. Observing one unit at two different time periods is what is called a panel data setting. In a panel data setting, we observe units i over time periods T. In our example, we observe the US state I equal to Alabama at the time periods year 1982 and year 1988. So our observations of, for example, the fatality rate are indexed both by the state and the year. And the same is true for the tax. We are observing not only Alabama, but also Arizona and all the other U.S. states. For a generic state I, we just index the variables by I. In panel data, we observe variation over time for each of the units. If you recall our discussion of time series data, you may remember that using time variation 
to learn stuff is actually very difficult. And it is only possible for certain time series that satisfy the assumptions of stationarity and weak time dependence. Now for most applications of panel data, we don't accumulate information by moving through time. Instead, we accumulate information by jumping from unit to unit. Therefore, we don't have to assume that time variation is nicely behaved. A useful way to think about panel data is that it's basically a cross-section where one cross-section observation is everything we observe for a certain state. So these would be our cross-section observations. Between cross-sectional observations, we have independence. The correlation of the variables within a cross-sectional observation is completely unrestricted. In particular, we don't make any assumptions about time variation and we can have any kind of serial correlation. Even though we don't use time variation to accumulate information in a statistical sense, we use it for something. And to show you how, let's go back to our example. The way I've written down the model equations for the two years is not helpful yet. But let's think a little bit about the A here. Let's continue to assume that A represents the state-specific law and order preference. Now what if this preference doesn't change from 1982 to 1988? Then these two will be the same and really I shouldn't be indexing them by year. Such an A that doesn't change over time is called a fixed effect. This fixed effect structure is very useful. In particular, we can do the following. We can take year 9080 and subtract year 9082. If we do that, we arrive at a new model equation where on the left hand side we have the difference between the outcomes. And on the right hand side, the beta naught is in both equations. So if we subtract, this cancels out. The A is in both equations. So if we subtract, it cancels out. So we're just left with the difference of this and this. Plus the difference between the two error terms. This here is just a transformation within our cross-sectional observation. So it's just another variable that we observe in our cross-section. Let's call it delta fr, or we use delta because it's commonly used um, for differences. And similarly, here let's call this delta tax. And the difference of the error terms will be delta u. Now using this new notation, we can just put together our transformed model like this. The transformation that we have applied here is called the first difference transformation. Let's take a look at what we have accomplished here. First, suppose we observe only year 82. 
our fixed effect A is unobserved. And also we assume it's needed as a control variable. In other words, if we just put this into an error term, then we will have OB bias. Now, if we observe 82 and 88, then we can compute the first difference transformation. The first difference transformation satisfies two very important properties. First, the A is eliminated, so we can estimate this by all S even if we don't have data on A. And secondly, so remember this beta 1 is our causal effect of interest. Now the same beta 1 is showing up here. This implies if we can estimate this here by OLS, then we will get an estimate of the effect of interest that we're interested in. Now, can we estimate this model by OLS? Well, conceptually we can because outcome and regressor are observed, but does all S produce good estimates of the causal effect? Well, to check that, we'll have to check our assumptions. First, let's check exogeneity. The exogeneity assumption says that the condition expectation of the error term given the regressor should be equal to zero. So economically we shouldn't be able to use tax changes to predict changes in the U. When would the externality assumption not hold? For example, it wouldn't hold if lawmakers are proposing a comprehensive package to change the um, fatality rate and the tax change is just one of many changes that they implement. Um, so some of the tax change will affect this part and then other changes they may implement will affect this part. And that means from looking at the tax change, we can predict you change. The next assumption that I want to check is full rank assumption. And in this um, case where we have a single regressor, the full rank assumption is equivalent to assuming that the variance of the regressor is strictly positive. So this here just says that there is positive probability that lawmakers will change the text between 1982 and 1988. Variance will be zero if lawmakers in all states don't plan any tax changes. So the full rank assumption will fail if taxes don't change over time. Next, let's check the random sampling assumption. We observe this model once for every cross-sectional unit and we have assumed that cross-sectional units are independent, therefore random sampling holds. Let's summarize what we have accomplished here. So we've started out with this model that contained a 
causal effect that we were interested in, but this model was infeasible because we didn't observe this variable. And we have to include this variable as control because otherwise we'll have omitted variable bias. We managed to transform this model into something that is estimable with the data that we have, and the transform model contains the same coefficient. This coefficient is estimable by all OLS under certain assumptions. To do all that, we need two things. First, we need a certain data richness. So we need data for 1982 and 1988 instead of just one year. So we need the uh, panel structure in our data set. And then we also exploited some properties of the economic environment. But let's talk about um, the data structure first. Data with a panel structure looks like this. We observe variation in the joint distribution of the fatality rate and the tax because of two reasons. First, because we observe different states, so we observe different units, and this is called cross-sectional variation. And in addition, we have variation from observing different time periods, and this is called time variation. We use time variation to compute our transform model. And then we use the cross-sectional variation to accumulate information about this transform model. Because of potential serial correlation, observing more than two time periods doesn't necessarily uh, provide more information. So really, all the learning is in the cross-section. So if you want to have, for example, um, small standard errors, essentially you want a large cross-sectional dimension. So you want lots and lots of uh, units. This is how we use the structure of our data. Now let's talk about our modeling decisions. We started with uh, this equation. Now, while we are at it, let's add some additional uh, regressors. Having these additional regressors doesn't really change any of our arguments. And the only reason why I focused on the case of a single regressor was that that keeps the notation a little simpler. To apply this model, to our data with a panel structure, we allowed all variables to depend on time. With one exception, the uh, fixed effect was time invariant. Whether this fixed effect assumption is plausible depends on the economic environment. To elicit whether a model with a fixed effect is plausible, we have to take a look at economic theory, and the data will not be informative about that. Without the fixed effect assumption, the uh, first different transformation does not eliminate A. So in summary, to apply fixed effect panel methods, we need both a special kind of data and we have to study in an economic environment where the fixed effect assumption is plausible.